All right. Well, you notice that the monster is bloody, and you notice him turn with a slight limp away, raises his wings, and he starts to fly. Um, uh, can you move, please? Chase him down, I say! Oh, but my laptop's already on the edge of the table. Well, he needs to flee somewhere. He's fleeing your direction. But this thing's got my stats, and I need a place for my mouse and my cup and my dice. What do you want me to do? Maybe we should think of a solution for next time, then. Huh. You mean like a, like a table where we can have like a laptop and a mouse pad and a drink and a dice all on the on the side of the table instead of like right here in our play area? You're so smart. That is exactly what I was thinking. That, that's a darn, darn good idea right there. And here it is. Table is completed. We kind of took the idea from Wormwood Table and ran with it where they have a metal piece along the back side of this slot that goes all the way around the whole table. So that way accessories can be magneted right in there and they can be moved, so forth. Um, we did go a step further with full on laptop trays because we use D&D Beyond, also cup holders. So that way nothing has to be on the play area itself. Unfortunately, I did not video the making of this table because I was building with friends and I didn't want to make them wait for me to set up a camera every time, every angle. But if you do want to copy our design, I'm going to go through the progression photos here and kind of explain what we did along with pictures of our blueprints that we made before we even built the thing. First things first, I'm going to remove these modular terrain blocks that I created so that way you can see the whole table. If you haven't seen the video on me creating these, you should check it out. They're pretty sweet. All right, so here's just the table. Um, to start off, I kind of want to show you what we started with. So, so to start, we just had a four foot by eight foot piece of plywood that was raised up on really crappy legs. So this piece here is what our tabletop used to be. So I'm gonna go underneath here to show you kind of what we were doing here. So here is one big four by eight piece of plywood. And then it was supported by one by threes. That's what these are here. Uh, one by threes going around the whole thing. This piece here used to be the outer edge of the table. Everything that you see past that is new stuff. So now I want to show you this blueprint that we created to add all that new stuff. So up here you can see by the labels, this side is the existing table and then this is all the stuff that we're adding to the side of it and here is a scale just for reference this equals one inch on this grid paper and up here just to kind of go through from each angle to sh show it better this is the side profile uh, this here is actually underneath the table looking straight up and then this is a top down of a corner just to show how the leg fits into this whole thing. If you're new to woodworking, you're probably wondering why this two by six doesn't cover this amount of space. Instead, it covers this amount of space. And that's actually because when they cut the tree down, they cut it into sections to where, for instance, a, they cut it into a two by six in an actual, it actually measures out to be two inches by six inches. And then in the drying process, the wood shrinks. So then it turns into a one and a half by five and a half. Uh, and anything that's like a one by something actually turns into three fourths of an inch instead of a one inch. Don't ask me why they can't just cut it bigger. And then that way it shrinks to be the size that they actually call it. But now we're stuck with wood that is called something that it actually isn't. And that's just how it is. Sorry for the rant, but... <laughs> First thing we did was add the one by six to the side and we just screwed into the plywood instead of screwing into the 
one by three and the plywood. And that's just because later we're gonna be screwing all the way through these three pieces of wood and we don't want any screws to get in the way of each other. And also wood is kind of a pain to work with because it does come from a tree and it's not gonna stay perfect all the time. So there'll probably be some curves and stuff, but things like this will get covered up once we add the one by threes on top of that and we can sand everything down to make it look a lot better. And the next thing that we need to do is actually add the one by threes to the top. And we start by cutting a 45 degree routed edge here. And this serves two purposes. One, it looks fancy. And the other is that it makes it more comfortable to rest your arm on. Otherwise it's kind of uncomfortable to have a 90 degree corner jabbing into your arm. And the way we actually adhere it to the one by six is with wood glue and also nail gun from the top. It's also, if you are using a nail gun, set it so that the nail gets sunk into the wood a little bit. That way you can fill those holes with a mixture of wood glue and sawdust. And once that's dry and you sand it off, it looks really clean and you can barely tell that there's a nail there. Then we actually added the metal, which is kind of the whole point of the table so that we can magnet things to it. And we did this with the table flipped upside down because all we're doing is super gluing it to the wood here. So having to not fight gravity while you're gluing it is a lot better. It just kind of rests on the one by three. This is actually a pieces of metal that we ordered and it's a quarter inch thick by three quarters of an inch tall. And that way it creates a three fourths of an inch tall slot in between the two by six that we will be adding next. And that way it makes it really easy for adding accessories later because we just know that anything that's a one by something will fit in the slot. We don't have to like make any weird custom pieces to fit in it. And it came in 10 foot sections, so we cut them down to the size we needed, which is a little over eight feet for the sides and a little over four feet for the ends of the table, which it ends up making a weird gap here, which doesn't matter at all because there's gonna be a leg in that spot and there's really no point in filling it and wasting time there. Next thing was adding the two by six to the side. And since this is an outward facing board, just like the one by three on the top, we put a lot more prep work into it with sanding and stuff like that. I also believe this started as a two by eight and then we cut the sides off with a table saw to create nice crisp edges. And that does matter for the top part, especially where the accessories are going so that the, the nice crisp edge will hold the accessories better. Then the way we fastened it was with just with wood glue and then a screw here and then also up here. And the top screw does show from looking at the top of the table, but we have modular train blocks going in, so you're not going to see it. So we didn't care about that specifically. You could do the top with a nail gun if you do care about that. So the next thing was actually adding the legs. And to find the legs is kind of difficult because they're not going to just have a post that is the exact width that you need it to be. So we took a four by four post that's meant for like building decks. So there was no nice edges or crisp edges on it. So we took the four by four post and cut it to the lengths that we needed it to be, which our legs were 31 and a half inch tall. So we cut it to those lengths and then with the table saw shaved off two of the sides to create nice edges. And then from those nice edges measured two and a quarter inches over to create our two and a quarter by two and a quarter post, which ended up being pretty close to flush with the two by six. So the next step was actually adding the leg to the table. And we wanted these to be removable, which there's a lot of different ways you could do this. Um, the way we did it requires some metalworking tools, which our friend actually has a lot of. And the way we did it was started by drilling a hole through the top of the leg down to the depth that we needed it to go. And then he helped us create a custom aluminum cylinder that we then threaded from the side, put threads in from the side. So that way the cylinder could go into the hole and then we would have a drilled out hole on the side of the leg. So that way this threaded rod that we actually cut to the length that we needed it to be can then get threaded into this aluminum cylinder and 
all of that gets super glued into place. So the rod is now just a part of the leg and it's very strongly in there. Then we used a 45 degree jig to help us make a 45 degree drilled hole through the one by three supports underneath the table. So then this leg with the threaded rod can go through that hole. And then on the other side of this 45 degree one by three, we can put a washer and then have a nut on the end of that. And that 45 degree one by three helps the washer have a really solid surface so that you can tighten that down and it'll really pull the leg into this 90 degree corner that we created with the one by six and two by sixes. And it creates a really tight fit. The leg doesn't move at all. It's really nice. And there are other ways you could do this. If you don't have the metalworking tools to create your own custom aluminum cylinder, you could just use this threaded insert and have that at a 45 degree angle into the leg, glue it into place. And then that way you could have a bolt go through the backside of these one by threes and into the leg and thread into that insert. It wouldn't be as strong, but it probably would work. To be honest, I think the way we did it is almost like it's way stronger than it probably ever needs to be, but I love the way it turned out. It's really nice. You don't actually need this block in between all these one by threes. This is just the remnants of when we had a leg screwed into that. So that's not needed. So you could actually have the one by three 45 degree piece closer to the leg so that way you don't need as long of a rod or as long of a bolt. And then we had to fix all these little imperfections where the wood is kind of curving. As you can see, it kind of sticks out from the leg there. We want that all to be flush. So we did a lot of sanding to bring that down. So now everything's nice and flush and finished it off with a really high grit sandpaper to make everything smooth. Then we just finished it off with a couple coats of dark walnut stain and then a couple coats of polyurethane on top of that to finish it off. Okay, so I finally am able to start building the accessories. So I've been working on these for quite a while. This one especially went through a lot of different revisions to get it to where it is currently. And uh, surprisingly enough, I do have friends. So I'm not gonna be the only one playing on this table. And so I'm gonna be making more of these in future videos. So I'm gonna have a video for each one of these and the next one is gonna be this laptop holder or player station is what I'm gonna call it. So stay tuned for that.